Hey guys, this is a Blender Burger tutorial. I'm CG Crafted, and in this series, I will show you how to create a beautiful photorealistic landscape. With this, we can create landscapes like this and this. In this episode, we will create the nose setup for the landscape that will turn this into a photorealistic mountain. For this to work, it's required to watch the previous uh, part of the tutorial because I set up the scene to be ready to complement the nose setup. The node setup is an advanced setup that I created so to make it uh, easier to use I will make it available to purchase only for 12 bucks if you don't want to spend a long time creating the node tree. In that case I strongly recommend you watch the first episode to know how to set up your scene to use the node material. We will rearrange the interface a little bit. Push this all over there as we don't need to see the landscape for now. This is to make more space for our beautiful node tree. Now come here and drag this so you will get a little preview window down here. Change from the properties menu type to the 3D viewport so we will have a small tiny preview. Since the node setup and subdivision is very resource intensive, we can bypass it by having only a small preview to render. Ok, so create a material here on the materials tab. This is good, now let's start with the node tree. We need a displacement texture to displace the rocky areas on the cliff side. I will leave a link to the displacement texture either in the comments or the description, so don't worry, be happy. Although, uh, feel free to use any cliff side or rocky texture you have, as this node tree works with any texture. Ok, so either prepare a cliff side texture you want or download mine. Shift A and get an image texture node and use Node Wrangler to quickly add a mapping and a texture coordinate node. Open your desired texture in the image texture node. Ok, the displacement is used to create the rocks on the cliff side which means we need to mask the displacement texture to be only on the cliff side. How do we do it? Well, it's not so hard, so don't worry. We will have to separate the height along the Z axis to do this. Copy your texture coordinate node and get a vector map node. Then shift A and search for a combined XYZ and a separate XYZ node. This is what we work with. We all need all these nodes to separate the Z axis, in other words, the height of the terrain. Put the combine XYZ on the top, set X to 0.2 and Y to minus 0.2 and then plug this into the vector input of the vector math node. The texture coordinate should be set to normal which means it will be a generated texture so it won't depend on our UV map unlike the displacement texture. Ok, so plug the normal output into the second vector mat output and set the vector mat node into uh, average. Now grab the vector mat output and plug it into the separate XYZ node input. Shift A and search for a color ramp node. Use the Z axis for the color ramp vector. Quickly set this up like this. This is in the final setup, ok. Ok, so why do we need the color ramp? Because this will be the mask to control where the rocky displacement should affect the terrain. But if you use the node for Angular at Dawn's Ctrl Shift Preview and change this little preview window to render view, you will notice that the steep sides are black. The mask will affect the area that is white. Since this mask defines for Blender what to do with the displacement texture, and we know we need to have displacement on the sides, you can guess this mask won't work. Until we add an invert node. Now, this inverted everything and the mask will affect the cliff size just as we wanted.
Now we will set up how big the effect range should be. You might want to set this up differently depending on if you want to create a very steep rocky mountain or a smooth hilly landscape where there aren't many rocks and cliffs. In most cases I found this to be a good setup. Ok, we have the basic mask that will define where Blender should show the displacement texture. This is the rocky displacement texture and we have to combine it with the mask. We can combine it with a simple Bixar GB node that is set to multiply. This is possible as we converted the height value to a simple black and white mask before with the help of the color amp node. Ok, so plug the invert node into the multiply and color 1 input and plug the displacement texture into the color 2 input and turn the fetcher all the way up. Ok, this is beautiful, but what if the displacement texture is too strong and everything gets spiky or stuff like that? We need to get two matte nodes to help us control the displacement height, which will help a lot in the future if you swap the displacement texture for different landscapes. Set the first matte node to multiply and the second to subtract. The second vector value in both nodes will be used to fine-tune the displacement texture. Let's experiment with this a little bit, see what will look better. Also, tone this down a lot, unless you want spice sticking out of your mountain. The first math node controls the strength, in other words, the height of the terrain, while the second math node controls the smoothness of the displacement. For the strength, we should use 1 for the rocks and 0 for smoothness, as probably most of the rock textures need to have depth and a lot of small details, not a smooth side. Also, if we set the smoothness, uh, the height of the cliffside will be reduced a little compared to the surface area. Ok, you think we can stop here now, but we can't. This is just the beginning. This might be ok for a snowy landscape, but what if we want to add the more micro details to the plain surface areas of the landscape where there isn't any mountain? Well, we need to reuse this beautiful node setup, life is so easy. So select this group of nodes and copy it. Put it down here. This will be the second displacement node group that controls the surface. We don't need to touch anything here because we want this to be the exact opposite of the cliffside setup. We want the white areas, in other words, the effect to take place on the surface area and not the steep cliff sides. What we have to do? Delete the invert node and touch it. Look in the preview window to fine tune the mask intensity if you need to. It's personal preference and how your displacement textures behave. For me, there was more green area when I left the color ramp the same and it was more rocky but the cliffside was less bumpy when I fine tuned the color ramp. Ok, let's get a very smooth displacement for the grass and fields. Again, you can download a texture or get a model of grass displacement texture from your own texture library for this purpose. I will go with this texture. Perfect. Now it's very nice that they work independently, but they should work together. We need to combine the two masks. Search for Mix RGB node and leave it on Mix. Plug the cliff mask in this and the other masks to the second color input. Beautiful! The texture should be turned down a lot. Now 
Now we have created the perfect displacement. In the next episode we will finish this snow setup and fine tune it. Hope you like this video, make sure to turn on the notifications to see the newest tutorials. Check out my stuff on CG Trader, I have some free models, and if you want to support me feel free to buy some models. Links are in the description.